Okay, next we're going to demonstrate how to test a radiator cap and a cooling system to perform a pressure test using the pressure test tool. Now there's various adapters, depending on the style of your cap, you need to select the right one. Whenever you go to remove a radiator cap, it is critical that the system is not hot when you remove the cap. If you do, if you remove a cap from a hot system, the coolant down in the engine will instantly boil. Remember, we are pressurizing the system to increase the boiling point. Um, and when it boils, it is now going to spew out hot coolant and is a safety hazard as well as going to um, result in a large loss of coolant. Um, to ensure the system's not hot, you want to feel the, in this case, the reservoir, feel the cap. If you can hold it with your hand, with bare hand without a glove, that's cool enough to remove. This system is cold, so we're going to remove this pressure cap. We're going to begin by testing the cap. And on this cap, you can see most caps are marked with their pressure rating. In this case, the cap is marked at 15 PSI. So that's the pressure rating we're looking for. We're going to select the correct adapter, which in this case, and um, with many modern cooling systems, is a threaded cap. And we're going to thread the cap on the adapter. This adapter will then allow us to install it on our pressure tool, our pressure tester. The pressure tester will attach to the other side of the adapter. It goes on much like an um, old radiator cap that has two ears that turns and locks in place. Now what is critical is these ears across the top of it. This is a pressure relief. Uh, they tell you to have them parallel or in a raised position when you um, install it. But in order to pressure test, they need to be turned down so that spring pressure is now going to seat the seal in here to allow us to test the cap. To test the cap, we're simply going to pump up the pressure tester and read what the maximum pressure is. Now, if you recall, this was a 15 PSI cap, and that means it should open somewhere around 15 PSI, which you can see there's 15 PSI, and we are just above that where it's opening. They also recommend that you check and see if it holds pressure for a little less than a minute. Uh, make sure it's not dropping quickly. Now, that could also be a fault of the tool or the hose if there's a problem with the seal. In this case, it doesn't seem to be dropping very quickly at all. So this would indicate a good cap that is opening right at 15 PSI. Remember, you're going to pump it up to see what the maximum pressure you can get out of it is. And that's 15 PSI for this cap. We're now going to take the cap off, remove the adapter from the tool, and we're going to prepare to pressure test our cooling system. In order to pressure test the cooling system, it needs to be full of coolant. It cannot be pressure tested when it's empty. Uh, it would be full of air and air is going to compress. You would be there all day pumping the tool to try and build pressure. And even if there was a leak, it would take a long time for that uh, pressure to drop accordingly. So you want to make sure you're as full coolant as possible before you pressure test the system. As far as pressure testing the system, you're going to select the correct adapter, install that. Now some adapters require an additional gasket to be installed. The threaded ones do not usually require this, but make sure you know what adapter to use and any gaskets that might be necessary. This adapter has an O-ring that seals in the neck. So we're going to thread that on. And install our tool. Now if you recall, our radiator cap on this system was rated at 15 PSI. We're going to press this system, pressure test the system based on that um, up to two, 1 or 2 PSI higher. So in this case, we're going to go to 17 PSI. Now they recommend before you install the tool that you once again turn this adapter so that is parallel, um, the head of the tool, to make it a little easier to install. Take the spring pressure off, put it in place, and then turn it to lock it in. You're going to tighten it very similar to a traditional radiator cap so it seals. You're then going to hold the tool and pressurize the system. This system, the coolant was recently changed, so it's going to take a bit of uh, pumps to increase the pressure to that 17, 17 PSI we want to go to. Now it's important that you do not over pressurize the system because you can damage, um, in this case, the plastic tank or the hoses. You can make things come apart if you over pressurize. So never go more than one or two PSI higher than what the system's rated for. But we want to go a little higher just so if the system is going to leak, it's going to leak when we test it and not after we give it back to the customer.
That's about 16. We want to go up to 17. And there we're at 17. If you can see the gauge, you can see that's exactly 17 PSI. Now what you're going to want to do is let that tool sit for two minutes and check the gauge again after two minutes. Sometimes you might want to take a picture of the gauge with your phone just so you can compare what it was two minutes ago. Set a timer. During that two minutes, it's important for you to look over the system for any leaks. Now remember, whenever you're looking for something like that, you want to use a light. So make sure you have a flashlight and begin checking the system. You want to check every radiator hose connection. You want to check along the engine, the sensors. Um, look for any signs of leaks or drips. You might see leaks happening under the, the truck. I'm not going to do it because we're filming this, but you obviously will want to check both sides of the engine during that two minutes time. The pressure will give you an indication of a leak, but so will the visual inspection of the system. It just so happens on this engine, we do have a leak um, occurring here. I don't know that you can see it from where the camera's positioned. So we're going to try to reposition the camera, give you a little better look at this leak. So at a closer look, you can see the coolant dripping off the bottom of the water pump, indicating a likely leak at the water pump, either the mounting gasket or possibly the shaft seal. Uh, whenever you see a drip there, you want to make sure you follow it up and make sure it's not originating from anywhere higher. So in this case, when we follow this up above our water pump, we see that we also have a leak, leak occurring at our uh, radiator hose connection uh, dripping off of the clamp. It does seem to be leaking at a much slower rate, so I would say we probably have two leaks here. We have a leak at that clamp that we can clearly see as well as at our water pump. So in this case, we found the leak in our system. So about four minutes have elapsed since we first pressure tested the system and we can see that our pressure has dropped from 17 down to 15 and a half PSI. We did check it at two minutes and it was at 16 and a half. Now, if you remember, it took about 50 pumps to pressurize this system. So that leak, which was a significant leak, only dropped it half a PSI. So if there is any um, drop in pressure, there is a leak. If it is still at the same pressure after two minutes, then the system is considered to be leak free and ready to be put into service. Now, when you go to remove it, you want to relieve the pressure and we're going to use these wings again. You're going to turn them to the raise bar and you'll hear the pressure hissing out of the system. This allows you to relieve pressure in a safe manner without losing any coolant. So we're going to turn them up. Pressure is completely off. We can take off our, our tester and then we'll remove the adapter and reinstall the cap. Now, as we found in this system, it indeed does have a leak, so that will need to be uh, repaired before it's put back in service.